should be live.
is uh, you're online. So you're looking. Uh, some of us, we, we just look a little, well, dare I use the word plumper? <laughs> so, that's right, Thanksgiving. And I know that if you look a little plumper, that you probably had a real good Thanksgiving. So as long as you don't tell me to look in a the mirror, then uh, you know, we'll, we'll be okay. But we had a good time. We hope you did too. And uh, just wonderful to celebrate with food and family and, and uh, uh, occasional football game. I think there was three on that Thursday, right? So if you, if you don't want some football, it, was, it wasn't on accident, that's for sure. We're glad that you're here today. This is the start of our Advent season. Uh, we are so excited about that. Our theme this year is God's Missionary Journey. A series of messages begin today with hope. We're going to be lighting the, uh, the Advent candles beginning here in just a little bit. Uh, we'll be approaching, I've approached several of you about uh, partaking in that. Bonnie is our worship leader today, and she's going to kick us off with some announcements. Good morning, everyone, and a huge welcome to you all. I'm watching people still come in. Yippee! Yeah. Uh, do we have any first-time visitors in person or online this morning? We would love to honor you as our first-time guest. God bless you today. And our next church work day is Saturday, December the 3rd at 8.30 in the morning. All help is welcome. The next Breakfast and Blessings is slated for December the 10th from 8.30 to 10 in the morning. See Carol if you are interested in helping with this ministry. And today's lovely flowers are given by Jim Haig in memory of Joanne, and also Gloria and John Jewett, the Bosky family, and Jenny Arndt, in memory of their parents, Delbert and Ruth Fisher. Amen. This week's calling club names are June Kittner, Donna Hannaford, and Bobby Brooks. If you would like to be added to the list, please let Sharon know. If you need a phone number, please call the church office. And Bible study resumes this week in 1 Corinthians 7 on Wednesday, November the 30th, in the church library at 1 o'clock. Printed lessons are still available for pickup from Pastor Wendell. Our Women's Guild is still accepting donations for Lowell Residential Home Christmas Bags. See Bobby for needed items. And the Guild Christmas Raffle is next Sunday, December the 4th, after the morning service. We are still accepting any and all prize donations. Get your raffle tickets from Jan Jansen. Amen. And the Guild Christmas Party will be on December the 8th at noon at Gasosimo's Pizza. Tickets will be $10 at the door, I believe. A communion preparation sign-up sheet is on the side bulletin board for 2023. Uh, good spots are still available if you want to help in this monthly endeavor. Please give some thought to this. Amen. I'll just to pause there for a second, Bonnie. Uh, I think Laura is the only one that has signed up, so we don't want to make her do all the communion prep for all of next year. So if anybody else can help Laura out, do it for Laura, you know. Uh, just sign up there, pick one of those dates, and we'll be happy to work with you on that. Bonnie, thank you. Good morning, Susia. Susia is looking for volunteers and or do donations for a prayer shawl project within the wider UCC church hierarchy. For next year, um, or no, for next year, Susia will advise of specific needs. Our Advent journey begins today. Our message series is entitled God's Missionary Heart. Plan on being with us in celebrating the Christmas season, beginning with Advent Communion next Sunday. And looking ahead, make your plans now for our Christmas candlelight service on Friday evening, uh, December the 23rd at 7 o'clock. Experience the joy of the season. Are there any other announcements? Uh, the last announcement that Bonnie just gave about the, the Christmas candlelight service, do keep in mind uh, sometimes we had the service on Christmas Eve, but with Christmas falling on a Sunday this year, that would mean uh, we'd be here Saturday night and then back for Sunday morning. So rather than do that, I opted to have the candlelight service on Friday, the 23rd, at uh, 7 o'clock. That way it gives us a day in between. And for those of you that have Christmas Eve plans and stuff with family, that frees you up to do that. 
and also uh, be here for Sunday morning service if, you, uh, if you're able to do that. So if any, any questions on that, just uh, let me know. Thank you. Any other announcements as Bonnie has said that we need to? I know we've got a council meeting, right, Jim? Yes. This Thursday, December 1st, uh, 6.30, if you can make that, uh, we'd love to have you. Anything else? All right. And uh, for our donations, for Bobby or Jan, is there any cutoff dates as far as uh, the donations for the upcoming Lowell facility? Well, um, <coughs> we want to deliver them, I have to call them, between December 5th and December 8th. So perhaps that weekend before yes. December 5th. So probably next Sunday or Monday would be the last, last day, okay. Next Sunday is December 4th. Amen. Okay. Okay. So try, if you want to, you got something to uh, to donate to that, try to get that to them by next Sunday. That's at the absolute latest. Amen. Anything else? Okay. Bonnie, go ahead. Please, please, please join me in the call to worship. Let us serve the Lord with gladness. Joyfully come before his presence with a song. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. Give thanks to the Lord for his precious gift of Jesus. Rejoice in the promise of our Savior and Redeemer. Our first hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Page number 87, if you need the book. We're making our transition into that time of year when we sing the songs of Christmas. What a, what a blessing this is. I think as we were trying to think of a, a pastor's group song next week, and we're going to do We Three Kings, Lord. Did you get the note yes, on I that? Did. Okay. Thank you. Uh, amen. I think this is one of Jill's favorites, right? Today. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Jill, how many verses do you want to do? Let's do one, um, four, and five. One, four, and five. There you go. You didn't know you were going to be part of the service today, did you? <laughs> one, four, and five. We may, we'd like to mix it up here. All right, one, four, and five. <laughs> Till the sun. 
some different words, Pastor? Did you have some different words? I, I don't think I can read, Bonnie, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just fine. Amen. Please join me in the invocation. Our God is among us, beginning this Advent celebration. He is our shepherd and caregiver, embracing us in his love. May the Lord Jesus be always with you. Praise God for his blessing and promises of hope. Oh, amen. Let's say good morning to each other. Peace.
this, ladies, is our first Sunday of Advent. Just in a little bit, I'm going to have some folks come up. We're going to start lighting these candles. We've got, we've got a bunch of candles here. We've got one, two, three, four candles and one white one in the middle. So five total. And these candles stand for hope, peace, joy, and love. And can you guess what the candle in the middle stands for? It's a person who was born on Christmas Day. Jesus! That's right. So over the next four weeks or so, we're going to light all of these candles. We're going to light the hope candle today. And the next week will be peace. And then the pink candle is joy. And then the the love candle, hope, peace, joy, and love. And then the center candle is Christ. So we're excited about Advent. It's the journey to Christmas. The journey to Christmas. All right, you guys ready? We're going to collect today. Bonnie, who are we collecting for today? Helping hands. Okay, thank you. All right, helping hands. who was given to us, Christ in our place. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having not been now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. 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 Bonnie, thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Well, I am so glad to see you. This is a wonderful, wonderful crowd, for especially for this transitional holiday weekend. Uh, a lot of folks are, are coming and going and traveling. Uh, and Kathy was able to spend Thanksgiving with her son and uh, the two little grandboys, uh, the, their whole family down in Dallas for the first time. She made it back yesterday uh, evening. We're just so thankful for, uh, for the safety. You never know what's going to happen this time of year with weather and stuff like that. We know that there's, there's several others that are out of town on various things. Uh, we want to pray that they get back safely. But we're excited for the beginning of, of Advent today. And as we start that out, uh, we're going to ask 
Kevin and Jill Dill. If they would come up, they're going to light the Hope Candle. And the way we've got it fashioned here, as I've said, that there's, there's four candles, Hope, Peace, Joy, and Love, and the Christ Candle in the center. And the third week, the Joy, is the Pink Candle. So we're going to designate this one as Hope. So we got Hope, Peace, the third week, Joy, and then we'll have the Love, and then Christmas Eve service for light. Christ King. So this is our one today. So you guys go ahead and get you some get you some fire. Your choice. You've got uh, 16 choices up here. We're so thrilled to have Kevin and Jill. They've just jumped in here in so many different areas of the church to help and be a part of it. This one right here. Our hope candle for today. You guys are quite welcome. Thank you. Let's give them a big hand. Amen. And each candle will be lit in succession. So we just kind of go counterclockwise around this year. And uh, that will work out exactly the way it's supposed to. Let me get this over here so I don't hurt myself. <laughs> that would be bad, right? That would be bad. But we're excited, hope, and uh, God just kind of put this, this theme on my mind oh, several months ago. I try to, try to plan things out, you know, in cycles of every three or four months. And when I began to think about the Christmas season, uh, it's, you know, it's been thinking about Christmas in July, in July and August when you're thinking that way. But if we, we plan for these things, we get excited about what, uh, what God is going to do. And uh, we're just thankful that we do have hope. In Jesus. And the scripture that Bonnie has read for us today from Romans chapter 5, I'm going, she began in verse, verse 5 for us. I'm going to backtrack just a little bit as we elaborate and expound upon our message of hope here, because we're coming out in, in Romans chapter 4. I mean, this is not a Bible chapter of, of Christmas as such, but it's a message coming out of chapter 4, Romans, of who Abraham was and how God used Abraham as the founding father of the nation that he was in charge of, that was following him. When he says there in verse 1 of Romans 5, you know, because Abraham was, was called of God, he says, therefore, being justified, he's speaking here of Abraham, justified by faith, we now have peace through God, uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherewith we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations and knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Now I'll pause there for just a second there because he goes on to say in patience uh, works experience and experience works hope. Um, if you're like me, if you've got into tribulations and you're trying, things are causing you to be patient, a lot of times the only hope I have is that this is going to end someday, that I'm going to get out of this. Well, whatever it is that I'm in, I'm hoping to see the end. What's the old phrase there? You see the light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, I want to see that light at the end of the tunnel. I want to know that things are going to work out, that it's going to be okay. Things don't always work out the way that I had hoped or my hoped, and they won't always work out the way that you had hoped. But if we're hoping in the right thing or the right person, this time of year, that is the most important thing. And that's what the focus of this hope candle is today. And that's what the focus of this message, message series is going to be on God's missionary heart. Now, I'm going to ask you this morning here, I was, uh, I had my phone out a second ago, I never usually like to do that, but I was trying to pull up the definition of missionary. I was looking at it earlier, and I, I didn't save it on my phone, so I'm going to ask you, if I ask you to define the term missionary, what might you say? Good, good, good and loud for me, okay? For us. What might you say? 
A missionary would be a, a teacher. That's a good one. Helpful. Helpful. Okay. What else might a missionary do? Be a speaker of Jesus. A speaker of Jesus. Okay. Worker. A worker. A worker. Okay. Searching, or there's another word I'm thinking of that starts with an S. They are, they're searching and they're sharing a message of truth or, or, or God's message. Usually when we think of missionaries, they are, are they religiously thought of? Can you think of any other constant context where missionary might mean something else other than a religious context? Another group? Someone is out helping another group of people? Yes. Or different cultures? Caretaker. Different what? Caretakers. Caretakers of other people. So, all right, Jim, you had one over here too. I, mean, I didn't quite get yours. Uh, I'm starting another church. Starting another church? Evangelists. He, like the evangelists? Okay, they, they're carrying the message of. of of Christianity to another church. Uh, there you go. Okay, I like that. I like that. These are all good. So, who needs the internet? I'll get you guys. I mean, some great definitions here that you've given today. Some great thoughts. Thank you for that. But when we think of God's missionary heart, why would God need to have a missionary heart toward us? What What do we need? Especially, especially this time. We need salvation. We need, we need hope. We need peace. We need, the world today needs truth. And the world is so concocted today that different people, it depends on who you talk to, they'll say, well, that's not my version of truth. I see you've talked with them too. But we live in a world today where that, that's what's going on. Where people say, well, that's not truth to me. There is only one version of truth. Everything else is a lie. Ask a politician. <laughs> there you go. I mean, and, and I, will, I will admit this to you this morning. There are things over the course of my ministry as, as a pastor there are things when, that I was dogmatic on or against or, or, or just this, that, or the other. Early on in my ministry where I realize now that, you know, maybe that wasn't such a big deal. There are things that I have changed my mind on. There are things maybe that God has softened my heart about. But that does not change what the truth was. Just because I've changed my mind on something doesn't change what the truth was regarding whatever those circumstances or situations were. And it won't change what the truth is because truth is truth. And it's God's truth. It never changes. God's word tells us, I change not. He's the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he'll be the same for time and eternity. God's missionary heart wants to reach out to each one of us, as was so well said, for salvation. We need a Savior. We need truth. There are people dying and going to hell today, not realizing that they need a Savior. Not realizing that someone had died for them. My heart breaks for families that don't know that Jesus loves them. You say, well, Pastor, how can that be? Folks, it happens. It happens. There are people in this world today that don't know that Jesus loves them. They don't know that God paid the price for their sins, sending his son to be born in that manger, to die on that cross, and to raise again that third day, proving he can pay the sins of the world, conquering death, hell, and the grave. They don't know that. And why don't they know it? Because no one has ever told what better time this year when you and me, we can 
share the truth of God's word with them? Will they all embrace him with open arms and they'll say, oh, thank you so much. This is just the greatest thing I've ever heard. So light. And that would be a really sweet reaction, wouldn't it? Yeah. Others will care. Others will tell us to mind our own business. And I'll tell you this, it wasn't with an attitude or it wasn't uh, snippy, but I had a guy tell me that one time, mind your own business. I said, Jesus is my business. And he loves you. Loves you. I want to have God's missionary heart toward people, toward circumstances that they may be going through. You know, this is a crazy world we live in. A lot of folks uh, are having a rough time. A lot of folks are having uh, difficulty making the proverbial ends meet, pulling things together. It's a struggle, not only week to week, but day to day sometimes for families. And, and, and some of the aspects of the church here from our breakfast and blessings to, to what the ladies are doing down to the folks in the, in the Lowell health care and what we've done with the Operation Christmas Child, uh, sending those boxes, just so these are just small things that, that we can do. But the everyday aspect of who we are and the hope that others can see Jesus in us is so very important. We need to do that not just this time of year, not just as we begin the Advent season, but as we live our lives. Let others see Jesus in you. So we've had our, our campaigns before about our shining lights, and, and we put our names on candles, we put our names on suns. You know, we need to let God's light shine through us this time of year, more importantly than any other time of year. It doesn't mean that this time of year is more important, but we've got to let our light shine now. The world needs to know that. They need to understand that this candle of hope applies to them. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands or anything like that, but perhaps you've been in a situation that you felt was hopeless. There's no way out, there's no hope, there's no resolution, there's no, there's no circumstance where I can you know, rack up a W in, the, in this. Maybe you've been in that. Maybe you're going through something like that right now. I don't know. But there is hope in Jesus. There's always hope in Him. I may not see a way, you may not see a way, but God can make a way through it around it, over it, he'll make a way. As the Apostle Paul wrote here, as he's talking about, as again I said, Abraham, him being a father of a nation, and as Bonnie led off in that verse 5, and she says, you know, hope makes not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to What a gift to receive this time of year, the gift of God's Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is more than just, uh, I remember I asked the kids one time, uh, like an elementary Bible uh, class, I said, who is the Holy Ghost? And one kid said, well, he's like Casper, he's the friendly ghost. <laughs> I know there's some element of truth in that. He is the friendly ghost, but he's more than a ghost, more than an apparition, you know, a white robe or anything like that with, with the black eyes. He's more than that. The Holy Spirit to me is, the Holy Ghost to me is, he's my helper. He's my teacher. When there's situations or circumstances where I'm coming out, I go, you know, well, I wonder if I should do that. He needs to be my instructor. He needs to be the one that will show me and point me and lead me in the way that I need to go so that I will glorify God. Believe this or not, your pastor is, is well capable of making a wrong decision. I've proven it time and time again. But the Holy Spirit, if I let the Holy Ghost guide me, I'm going to make good choices. I'm going to make
make sound decisions. I'm going to make decisions that will give me the hope I need to carry on. He'll do that for you too. That's not just me saying that to you, that's God promising that to you here in this verse from the Apostle Paul in Romans 5, 5. Hope creates the love of God in us. That while we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You know, that, that's one thing, Perry, that amazes me this time of year when I think about what God did for me, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, that He lived that perfect life. When I think of coming to God, I didn't have to clean myself up. I didn't have to put on, you know, new this or new that. I didn't have to quit doing this or quit doing that. I came to God just as I was. There's that old invitation song that uh, in my Baptist days we used to sing. Most every week, at the end of the service, it's the Fanny J. Crosby song, You're Just As I Am, Without One Plea, But That Thy Blood Was Shed For Me. You come to Jesus just as you are. I think Billy Graham used that in many of his crusades there at the end. We come just as we are. But I've talked to people, and perhaps you do, you have too, that thought the only way they can have hope is if they do something to ingratiate or make themselves better to God so that he will accept them or want to accept them. Come as you are. Come as you are. Come, come with all the baggage. Come with the dirt. Come with the grime. Come, come, you know, come with the junk. Whatever it is that you're carrying or whatever it is, wherever it is you're at, come with it and give it to him. Kneel in prayer and say, God, I'm yours. Take me. Take me. There's a scripture here who just told us that he came to us. He came to the ungodly. Our focus, our trust, our vision wasn't on him, but he loves us. And God died for us that way. Paul goes on to say, as Bonnie read for us, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man. Some would even dare to die. But one of my favorite verses in all of God's word is Romans 5 and verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us. That's you. That's me. He commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. We were hopeless. I was hopeless. But while I was yet sinner, Christ died. He died for me. He died for us. Much more than now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. My hope, my hope in him, is that he's paid the penalty for my sins. He's, pay, he's paid my bill. The wages of sin, the cost of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. My hope is that he's paid that bill for me so that I can be saved from the wrath. What do I deserve? What do we deserve? We all deserve to go to hell because that's the cost of sin. Since Adam and Eve messed it up for us there in the Garden of Eden, we deserve hell. We deserve separation from God. But God provided a way back. I have found over and over in my life, and perhaps you have too, that our God is a God of not only second chances, but third chances, and fourth chances, and fifth chances, and just on and on and on. If you will come back to him with a contrite heart, faith, believing, he will meet you there. He'll love you like nothing ever happened. He just wants you to know that he loves you. He wants to forgive. So many times I've encountered so many families over my years in ministry that just want to for, for lack of a better word, just want to fuss. 
mean, I know families are dysfunctional. I know, you know, this and that, that there's, there's right and there's wrong and there's things that there's, there's hills to die on and this, that, and the other, but wouldn't the focus be better if we just love one another? If we just love one another and went from there, if we applied God's example of love and gratitude and mercy and grace and just said, even in our Bible study, a week ago we talked about the Apostle Paul said to the church of Corinth, he said, you know, don't, don't take uh, 1 Corinthians you know, 5 and 6, we were talking about the aspect of going to court against a brother or sister in Christ. Paul says, you know, he says, don't do that. Don't do that. It's, it, it's a harm and it's a shame for the, the message of the gospel if the world sees Christian believers doing that. He says, but rather yet, he says, I would rather, if someone wrongs me, I'd rather take the loss and be a shining example to Jesus. I had a discussion that we had about Bible study. I mean, it's, it's easier said than done sometimes. But Paul's message and Paul's point is clear. There are things more important than suffering a loss when it comes to being an example and a shining light for Christ. He is our hope today. As we kick off this message series on God's missionary heart, he wants you to know today that he's our hope. He wants you to share with the world today that he's your hope. He wants you to live today as he's your hope. God's missionary heart is full of hope today. Do you know him as your Lord and Savior if you're watching online today? Is he your God today? Is Jesus your Lord? You can know that. You don't have to wonder about it. You can know that he's your hope. I'd be happy to share that with you, verse by verse, page by page in God's Word. Just put something uh, in the remarks about I'd like to know more out to you. If you're here today, I'm available after service. We'll talk, we'll sit, sit down and share from God's word how you can know Jesus is your Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Kevin and Jill, thank you for lighting the hope candle. And I have not forgot about the birthdays. So Laura, don't, don't let me forget about the birthdays here in just a, a minute. We've got uh, two birthdays. We've got Judy. And we've got Kevin who's got a birthday. That's right. So we're going to see. Well, why don't we just do that now before we do the prayer request so I don't forget about it, right? right. Amen. What do I tell everybody? I've got a good memory. It's just short. <laughs> All right. With us, a happy birthday to Kevin and Judy. And is there anybody else's birthday that I was not informed of that we can have a little fun with today? Down. No, no, not me. All right, so we've got Kevin and Judy. Okay, Laura, go ahead.
six? Wow. Yes, so she has pneumonia. Okay. Her request for her neighbor, John Roman, a severe infection. He's been in a hospital. Blake Parker, or Blaine Parker, uh, angiogram coming this week, and little Naomi, who is six years old now. Uh, she had the heart transplant, right? Years ago. It's, it's just, a, just a, a wee little one. She has pneumonia, so let's pray for her. Okay. All right, who else? Yes, Carol. Our neighbor who's been with us here at Church Lindenbeer is having gallbladder surgery this afternoon at St. Anthony's. Linda Beard, gallbladder surgery? On a Sunday, okay. Let's pray for Linda. Who else? Yes, Irene, good to have you back. Yes. He did have the surgery? No, he will. Okay, now I see the one that's having multiple surgeries? Okay. Okay, so. Okay, Kim is looking for permanent housing out there. On the East Coast, I understand the market's been really, really rough out there as far as securing that. So let's pray that the door opens for her. Thank you, Irene. Who else? Joe? Okay. Who is Joe? Your sister Margie, okay. She's having an angiogram? Joe's sister, Margie, angiogram. Okay, amen. Yes, Norma? My son Dan had his last radiation and chemo. Amen. Amen. Keep Dan in your prayers as he's during the recovery stage now that things would continue to go well. Good. Gloria, go ahead. Pray for Jake as he's beginning his treatment. And he is still in the Air Force, right? Okay, let's pray for him. Pray for him, bless his heart. And who else? Bobby? Jan's nine-year-old granddaughter? Yes. Okay. Great-granddaughter. Great nine-year-old great-granddaughter, Aubrey, with emergency surgery, and, and there will be more surgeries to follow, you've said. Okay, let's pray for Aubrey, the circumstances here. Okay, Jan, thank you. Amen. Anyone else? Well, my amidst our thanks, we have much, much, much to be to pray about for sure too. Unspoken? All right. And if you have prayer requests online, just put them uh, put them in remarks in a succinct manner. We will add them to our, our prayer list. 
Let's take a moment for silent prayer. And we'll pray and ask God's blessings upon you. Lord God, we thank you for this day that you blessed us with, and uh, we're just grateful, Lord, for uh, your mercy and grace in our lives and for your missionary heart toward us in sending Jesus to, live, to deliver a message of hope. We pray today, God, for uh, our, our dear sister June Kinder, where she's got several things going on in her body, but Father, COVID is the latest one. We just pray that you touch her and meet her at the point of her knee, from the knee to the COVID scenario, we just pray for her health and for her healing. For Shar's neighbor, John Roman, and the infection that he's been suffering from for better than a week. We pray for his continued health and recovery. For Blaine Parker as he's undergoing an angiogram later this week. Lord, that that would go well and, and take care of the issues that he's experiencing. Lord, for little Naomi, we just pray for this little one as we have, Lord, uh, so many times before that she has pneumonia now. You lift her up from that and strengthen her, Lord. What a precious, precious child this young one is. And for Carol's friend Linda Beard, who's going to have a gallbladder surgery today, we ask that you meet her at the point of her knee. For uh, as Irene has asked, for prayers for her daughter's friend John, who's beginning a series of surgeries with neck surgery this week, Lord. We pray that this would go well, and also for Kim with housing concerns out east, that you'd give her, Lord, a place to stay uh, there permanently, Father. And uh, grateful for Norma's update on Dan, that uh, his chemo and, Lord, uh, cancer therapies uh, are complete for now. We just pray that you'd be with him. We do need to pray for Susie's husband, Leon, uh, for Jen's great-granddaughter, Aubrey, the circumstances there, Lord, with the emergency surgery and Lord, upcoming or further surgeries, we pray that you just touch this precious little one as well. We pray for Joe's uh, sister Margie, Angel Graham, that she's going to have, Lord. We continue to pray for Gloria's cousin Jake, and Lord, the, uh, the cancer that uh, he is undergoing treatment for, that you'd be with him, Lord, and just lift him up. And for Bobby's friend Wayne, cancer concerns there, we ask that you his knee. We've seen the unspoken request for the uplifted hands. God, guide and direct us as we begin this Advent season, Lord, with hope in you, trusting you, relying on you. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 And ushers are going to come at this time. We're going to receive our morning offering. You give as, as you're able to and as God is blessed. If you're watching online, you can use the online giving tool. Uh, if you choose to do that, we'll just drop a check in the mail to the church office here. And we'll be happy to take care of it for you. Amen. As they're getting the plates, I do want to say uh, last Sunday we had a phenomenal concert here at the church. By the, uh, the folks, the Ramsey Revival Trio. Nice to get their name right to it. <laughs> Amen. It's just it was such a wonderful spirit-led group. I enjoyed them so much. If you did not get a chance to be here with us last week and you have computer access, uh, just watch it on the church Facebook page. The, the sound comes through, the songs. It just, it's a wonderful experience. I've watched it two, three times since this past Sunday, and I think I've enjoyed it more each time. So make that we make that available to you. Ushers, go ahead.
here on the chair. And I just realized I skipped a song, didn't I? Yeah. You want to sing or you just want to go straight to the end? I didn't quite get that. Go to the end. Go to the end. Okay. I got that. All right, page number 93, Angels We Have Heard On High. You just want to go downstairs and eat what you want to do, right? I know. Amen. Let's do one, two, and four. God bless you.